We are with Professor Jochen Wirtz. And Jochen, this is one of my favorite topics. It's about bouncing back when things go wrong or turning oops into an opportunity. We call it service recovery. Please dive in. Yeah, I mean, this is a very, very uh, hot topic, actually. And what surprises me a lot is that senior management often doesn't want to get involved in complaint handling, service recovery. They're very happy to delegate that to customer service, right? And I always, when I have my executive MBA course, make it a point to sensitize them to the importance of this topic. The power, the, the power. value. And the key thing is really, uh, why is it so important is because we all understand lifetime value of customers, yes? But yet, you look at churn, 40% of churn on the average globally is due to poor complaint handling and poor service recovery. So it's one of the fastest things you can do to increase share and increase revenues is you, you stop your leaking customer base. You can retain and keep customers with you. When something goes wrong, that's when they're going to leave. Yes, yes You're yes. saying the recovery is key to pulling them back. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, there are sort of a few principles on service recovery, really. And, and the first one for me is always, don't just be reactive, also be proactive. Mm. If something goes wrong, don't wait until you get complaints. <laughs> if a diner doesn't eat half the food, maybe you should ask us everything, all right, sir. Right? Because then you, you can, you can uh, recover on the spot, right? Or if, if you're in a clinic and uh, you know a patient has a 3 p.m. appointment and it's 3 p.m. and you know the surgeon is going to be busy for another hour and a half, don't wait until the patient comes to ask you, oh, when do I have my appointment? Just be proactive. Talk to the patient. Look, you know it's going to be an hour and a half late. Would you, shall, can, shall I reschedule you or would you like to give me your phone number? I call Get it. out in front of what otherwise would have been a complaint. Absolutely. So it's sort of, it is proactive. And the next one really is, look, I know I'm going to have delays as an airline. It's part of the business. Part of the business. Bad weather, air traffic control. So each time when this happens, do I let my staff think on their feet what to do? Oh, or do Lord. I pre-plan this whole thing, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah? So it should be pre-planned. If it's 30 minutes delay, keep everyone in the gate, make the following announcement. If it's four hour delay, da, 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 right? The next one is it should be, so it is pre-planned, then it needs to be trained. Yeah? I mean, you train with the staff what to do if it's an eight-hour delay. Yeah? So you're following announcement, meal voucher, and so on and so forth. With a smile, proactively, yes. Absolutely. And then the, the last is really is also it should be empowered. There's no need to ask a manager. If X happen, do Y. Boom. Yeah. So this is sort of what, what you need to put in place for, for a very uh, effective service recovery sort of process here. And uh, the other is uh, the main uh, customer um, feeling towards recovery. So we call the satisfaction with the recovery relates to the fairness of the recovery. So, uh, so the customer themselves, we do our recovery action. How did that actually make the customer feel? Absolutely. So do they think what they got from you was a fair recovery? Mm -hmm. Good. And one thing to keep in mind is that the fairness is likely to be what we call jaundiced. Oh, tell. Our customers, of course, what you think is fair is different from what the customer thinks is fair. Okay. They may actually be looking for generous, not just fair. Absolutely. So, and, and it is irrelevant from your point of view because it, customer satisfaction should be the objective of the process. Right. So you should be always say is um, well-dosed gener generosity should be the guideline. Well. Well-dosed generosity. Well-dosed generosity, yes. so which is assessed by the person receiving the action or the gift, not by your costs of what did it cause for you to be able to do it. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we always say uh, service failure is an opportunity to impress a customer we wish we hadn't had. <laughs> but now that we've got it, thank goodness we do. We do, absolutely. And I mean, one thing you have to be careful though, I mean, I come to compensation in a second compensation strategies, but one thing to worry about is if you have well-dosed generosity, there will be some people who take advantage. That will happen, but that do will... you design your system to prevent the few percent that will take advantage or do you want to well-dose generosity to the masses? Yeah, ideally both. Yeah, so what you, what you do is you have to keep track who invokes guarantees, who gets service recovery, 
and then you have to deal with customers who openly sort of yeah, work around the system. Or abuse it. Or abuse it. I mean, I can give you an example. I worked with a cruise line and there were customers who always booked the cheapest cabin. And within the tw first 24 hours, they had a long list of complaints and expected an upgrade. Right? And in these cases, you have to keep track and you have to communicate to the customer. And just by approaching customers, they understand, oh, you are understanding what they're doing, the majority will stop. Right. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it also doesn't mean by being generous that you're open to abuse. You have, we call them J customers. It's like jaywalkers. Like jaywalking. Yeah. yeah. So we, we deal with them. Yes, we deal with them. But it doesn't mean that because you have one in 500 customers who, who is cheating that you treat the other 499 badly. Yeah. So most customers are honest customers and you want to keep them. Yeah. Now, on the on the uh, sort of recovery, what you should do. I mean, let me give an example if you're not generous. If a customer feels uh, that customer experienced great unfairness. That you're being stingy, stingy or difficult. Un unreasonable, yeah. right? What happens, you offer a recovery and they will come back and tell you, I'm not happy. And Even they, though you've done some recovery yes. action. And they will, what, they, what we call, they will negotiate. And they may move into aggressive claiming. They may threaten social media and reviews and other things, right? So they put a lot of pressure now on you doing something. Because you weren't generous in the first place. And then if you do something, you satisfy what they are asking for. But the interesting thing is the outcome is not satisfaction with the process. Actually, they attribute the resolution to their own effort. Their and, own yeah. complaint. And they think you are still a bad company. So you paid. I had to fight for it. Then you gave it to me reluctantly. Yes. I got something, but I didn't give you credit for having given it to yeah. me. You should have been generous in the first place. Yes. So, I mean, you can see, I mean, you have the worst of both worlds. You pay and you're and not You being, don't get the benefit. You don't get the benefit. So it's, it's very important, therefore, to understand what fairness requires and then deal with well-dosed generosity. It's right? interesting that you keep using the term fairness, yes. and yet it's generosity that you actually want the customer yes. to understand. I, I wonder if they even think of the word fair when they're thinking, no, be generous with me. Yeah, no, fairness, so there's a ton of research on this. What people are sensitive to is, is the fairness of the recovery. Okay. How much pain they had to go through, how much effort they had to go through, how much in, inconvenience, right, is, is, is very important. And there are two sort of uh, uh, types of service failures, and they require a different type of compensation, if you will. Please. The first one is called the uh, is a process failure. So in the end, I do what I'm supposed to do, but maybe you were a little inconvenienced. So your reservation was lost. It took some time to find it. Yeah. And for those process failures, in general, we don't have to pay compensation. If there is a truly heartfelt apology, and mm -hmm. doing it right, mm -hmm. that is good enough. You, in general, mm -hmm. you don't have to train customers to expect uh, compensation for everything, Understood. right? So if you Understood. do that well, then that should be fine. On the other hand, if there's an outcome failure, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. So you, I bought a 24-hour overnight delivery service and you deliver in 48 hours. You clearly didn't do your part of the deal, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have to compensate. There is no choice. Yeah. So if it's a process breakdown, I'm genuinely apologetic and let us take care of you. Yes. If it's a performance breakdown, then you owe me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Then you have to do something. Yeah. To, so then, I mean, I, I have a whole session in my EMB also on the economics of, uh, of service, service recovery. recovery. And we talk, what does it cost you? Yeah. And what do you gain? Uh, well, uh, the gain, we, I mean, we understand the gains. Right? You, you retain a customer relationship and the lifetime value of that customer. The economics, the positive economics are phenom phenomenal. And right? you avoid the negative economics of bad social reviews and lost customers. Yes, yes. But on the other hand, I still, do, I mean, yes, well, those generosity, but I don't want to waste money either. Right. How can I do this cost effectively? Okay. 
And uh, one has to understand the, 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 I mean, so don't get me wrong, I don't want to try to be stingy here. I just want to put on the table what do the different options cost. It's right? a business hat. There it's are going to be costs. Yeah. Yes. And this is quite important because, let's say, for example, airlines, if the in-flight service entertainment doesn't work on a, on a certain flight, there's a certain hard dollar compensation for this, which can be tens of thousands of dollars on a single flight. So these policies are important because there's a lot of money involved. Okay. And let me give you a very simple case study. If you're in a restaurant and you get a frozen prawn cocktail. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> then what do you do as a recovery as the restaurant? And the very cheapest you can do is you smile, apologize, defrost, smile, and apologize again. So not delicious. In other <laughs> words, I ordered a prawn cocktail. It came, but the prawns were frozen. I, I bite into it. This is not the dinner that I expected. Okay, now we're in a recovery situation. Yeah. And? Yeah, that was the cheapest option, right? Now, what would it cost? So, that does cost you only training and process, yes? Of course, it's not very effective. Customers are going to be happy with it, yes? Now, what would it cost you if I said the prawn cocktail, I replace it and I waive the check for that cocktail? So, the cost of food is, let's say, $3.00. The retail price of the cocktail is ten dollars. Right? So I've lost the ten dollars, yeah. and I've incurred the additional cost of Ab three. Yeah, absolutely, and most people get this wrong. They think, oh, if I give you the free prawn cocktail, it costs me only the cost of food. Or even in a loyalty program, I give you, let's say, airtime as a mobile operator. It costs me the airtime. It just costs me nothing because the airtime is uh, variable cost is almost nothing, right? But you always have to look at, you have to understand the opportunity cost. You lost the revenue. You lost the revenue, exactly. So the one of the most expensive recoveries you can do is waive the bill because it costs you dollar for dollar. Mm -hmm. yes? If I also tell you, look, I replaced the prong cocktail and I apologize, I say, of course, a coffee or dessert is on the house. Uh -huh. right? Then there's a sort of nice surprise. It's a little bit less economical at the recovery, so many customers actually feel better. Because with it. for me, it's only going to be the food cost to give you that coffee yeah. or dessert on the house. Yeah, uh, be careful. It depends. If I had ordered a, a dessert anyway, it costs you also dollar for dollar yes. because it cannibalizes. So here you have to attach the probability of this customer ha having bought a coffee or dessert and not having bought a coffee. So they can, we do, in class, we do all the comp uh, computations on this, right? But you can even spin this further. So what does it cost you? I apologize. I give you a free bottle of champagne and a bouquet of flowers. And there's no more cannibalization now because you take the bottle home and the flowers, you don't eat them, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, you can, and, and um, uh, for example, airlines, if in-flight entertainment system doesn't work, I give you a $50 in-flight shopping voucher. And you spin that idea, right? It's mostly completely incremental revenue. None of the items in the catalog are for $50. So you can either buy something for $38 and lose $12, or you can buy something for 50, $75 or $100. And add the extra and money the extra in. Cash. And if I give it to you towards the end of the flight, when duty-free is already closed, it'll have to be on your next flight on the airline. I've secured that you're coming back. So, I mean, there are all these, and I get you used to look through my catalog, and maybe mm -hmm. I can, you know, I get, I convert you to buying on board, right? Yes. And, I mean, I worked once with a cruise line, which was also interesting. Um, we, we redesigned the service recovery and personalized it. So, if I had a couple who complained, there was a problem. I mean, I want to do something for them. I look at their profile, or oh, they've never been to the casino. I give them $200 free chips. Uh, maybe they come more often. Or they've never been to the spa and I've spare spa capacity, I give them a spa voucher. So maybe they do more spas after that, right? Or with a mobile operator, what we did, we look at your profile. Oh, in Singapore, you have to pay for uh, incoming uh, caller ID. You have to, there's a fee for caller ID. So if you don't have caller ID, I give you free caller ID for 12 months. After 12 months, you, you don't want to not have caller ID and anymore. you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it. So, I mean, I always teach you service recovery, not just also for the purpose of retaining the customer, but you can attach strategic objectives to it. Opportunities yeah. that will lead to increased yeah. and additional revenue in the future. Yeah. Well, one of my students gave this example. He was uh, gaming with Sony. Sony had a privacy leak, and their recovery was half a year free access to a new game, which then became a bestseller because everyone had this game and didn't stop after the six months, of course. Of course. And yeah. in fact, they weren't on the game before the privacy leak. Yes. Yeah. So, Very I mean, good. this is a smarter way of, on the one hand, yes, I recover and I do it in an effective manner and I avoid all of the ne bad negotiations and bad outcomes. 
On the other hand, if I do it smartly, I understand the economics of the, of the business, of, of, the, of the process here, and I can use it for business purposes and as I'm, well. I'm perceived as generous. Let me ask the one closing question. Is this actually a situation where business may, in certain circumstances, want to create a problem ah. so that they generate the opportunity to recover? Two quick comments on that. N number one, um, ethics is so important in service firms because you ze can keep zero secrets in service. So if you get caught, it's a worst case scenario. It's a worst case scenario. And number two, there's hardly a business that doesn't have enough problems already. As it is. <laughs> Very good. Uh, a master on service recovery and the value of being generous when things go wrong. Turn your next oops into a real business opportunity. Thank you, Jochen. Okay, thank you, Ron.